from Range of Motion and I'm proud to bring you WOD number six of the WOD Games season number one. I hope you guys all had a great Christmas. Uh, we're now into the new year. First WOD for the year, so let's hit this one hard. Two options this week, guys. Two CrossFit style workouts. We have Cindy and we have Mary. Cindy, AMRAP 20 minutes, five pull-ups, 10 push-ups and 15 squats. Mary, also a 20 minute AMRAP with five handstand push-ups 10 pistols and 15 pull-ups. The thing is, guys, you get to choose which one you're doing. Let me talk you through the scoring system and the rationale behind the choice. So, why the choice of two workouts? The two workouts both test the same base components of fitness. The first is that upper and lower body stamina, all those gymnastic-based skills. And the second is cardiorespiratory endurance. So even though we're doing two different workouts, they both test similar components. The main difference, however, is that Mary is more challenging on a skill level. Those pistols are gonna be tougher than squats. Handstand push-ups are gonna be tougher than push-ups. And the higher reps of pull-ups are really gonna test that stamina a little bit more than the lower reps that you'd have in Cindy. So even though we're using slightly different exercises, it's the same time domain and the same components are being tested. We're still comparing apples and apples. We just want to see whose apples are best. So if Cindy's easier, why choose Cindy over the option of doing Mary? This comes down to the scoring. The way we're going to work this is that every single rep you do counts as one point. That's if you're doing Cindy. If you're doing Mary, every single rep will be worth three points. So 10 rounds of Cindy, 30 points per round will be a total of 300 points. If you do that same 10 rounds of Mary, it's gonna give you a total of 900 points. So because of the more advanced exercises, we are weighting each rep at a multiple of three. This is to encourage people to attempt those higher level skills and really again to test those athletes who are able to show and demonstrate these high level movements. Standards first for the pull-ups. Very simple, we have a start point and an end point. The start point is with your arms fully locked at the bottom of the rep. The end point is with your chin above the horizontal plane of the bar. So it doesn't have to be on top of the bar, just above that horizontal plane. It doesn't matter how you get from that start point to that end point. Let's have a look at a couple of the options for how you may get there. If you choose to do a jumping pull up, every four jumping pull ups counts as one normal rep. So if you're doing Cindy, instead of going 5, 10, 15, you're going to go 20, 10, 15, with those 20 jumping pull ups being similar to the five standard pull ups that we're going to do. The standard for the jumping pull ups, guys, choose a box, which means that when your arm is held overhead with a straight arm and your arm next to your ear, the bar is at the midpoint of your wrist and your elbow. From that position, it's hands on the bar. Again, you're jumping until your chin passes the horizontal plane of the bar from straight arms. Let's now have a look at the stand for the push-up. Guys, we're not doing a hand release push-up for this workout. However, there are a couple of things you need to be certain of to make sure that the rep is full and isn't counted as a scale of movement. Hands on the ground, hips up as you would for a standard push-up. From this position, you're lowering until your chest hits the ground and then returning to the top with arms locked and straight. There's a couple of things with this movement, guys, which are going to constitute a no rep. The first is if it's your rib cage rather than your chest which contacts the ground. These are all no reps. 
The second is if any part of your body, other than your hands, toes, or chest, hit the ground. So this includes contact of the ground through your quadriceps, through your knees, or through both. If we can keep these standards strict, what this will do is remove any snaking from the movement. It ensures that the body is strong, stable, and straight, and that we are indeed testing that upper body pushability, rather than testing your ability to just kip and snake off the ground. What standard is again very, very simple and consistent with most of what we would do. From open hips, open knees and high chest at the top, we're squatting to the point where your hip crease drops under the top of your patella. If there's any confusion or contention with this movement, guys, if you're not sure if the hip crease is below, it will be called a no rep. So make sure that if you're watching your video back or if you have judges with you, they're aware of this, the hip crease must be clearly below the top of the patella. Standards for the handstand push-up in Mary. Starting on your feet, you're kicking up against the wall. These must be completed with your back to the wall. These cannot be completed facing the wall with a wall walk. From this position, with arms locked, you're going to drop down until some part of your head touches the ground. You may not use a towel or an ab mat underneath your head. You must be going hands on the ground, head to ground. Ensure that it's some part of your head that touches the ground as opposed to your hair touching the ground. From this position, you're then straightening the arms back up and you're locking out. You must have both heels in contact with the wall upon lockout. If you lock as you're falling back to your feet, it will be called a no rep. Finally, the standards for the pistols. With the pistols, guys, you're doing 10 pistols and you must alternate legs. Right, left, right, left, until you've done 10. One rep on the right, one rep on the left is two reps. So right, left, five times will give you your set of 10. With the pistols, one foot in contact with the ground, you begin with your hip open and your knee locked. From this point, you're again gonna to drop to the point where your hip crease drops below the top of your patella. No other part of your body may then contact the ground until you are returned back to that full knee and hip extension. This constitutes one pistol. So that is WOD number six of the WOD Games Season 1. The choice of Cindy or Mary. Guys, if you think that this is unevenly biased towards one of the workouts, my advice would be choose the workout that you think is going to be the best for you. If you think one is going to be much easier than the other, go with that one because it's going to give you guys the best score. Have some fun with this one. Work hard and I will see you next week for what promises to be a good laugh with WOD number seven. Thanks guys, happy new year from Range of Motion and the White Games, see you soon.